Hello, everyone. Our special guest is Margaret Langton, the queen of the toy piano, a legendary pianist who worked with such a great artist like John Cage, George Crump, and many, many others, and who is now actually in Singapore, and she will play for us. During the Chopin and Friends Festival, November 12th, we'll have a special night dedicated to John Cage because of the 30 years anniversary of his passing. And Margaret Lang will play for us two pieces during this festival. She will play for us Dream and she will play for us in the name of the Holocaust. So I'm very thankful that she's with us. Hello. Yes. Hello. <laughs> How have you been? How is the weather in Singapore? <laughs> It's tropical. We're just off the equator. So nice. it's warm. It's like New York summer, but much more humid. Oh. Also, you do you have some of your family? No, anyone? Friends? I've, yes, some of my family is yes, here yeah. and a lot of my friends are here. So yeah. I am enjoying the time here, even though I'm very busy. It's wonderful to be home. There's nothing like home. But that has been a COVID time, so I'm sure you didn't travel much. So it's been a long time since, you, since you've been to Singapore, probably. A year and a half, yeah. Oh, you live in New York, of course, for, for so many, many years. John Cage was a New Yorker because he lived for so many years. And you will play for us at the concert in the Polislavic Center two works by John Cage. You will play also on the toy piano because you are a, called the queen of the toy piano. And um, you will play for us Dream, right, by John Cage in the name of the Holo Holocaust. So I would like to ask you if you have some maybe memories playing maybe those pieces for John Cage. In the Name of the Holocaust is a very special piece by John Cage. It's one of the, I think, very rare pieces which he wrote for string piano, playing directly on the piano strings. I'm not talking prepared piano, but string piano, where you pluck the strings directly. Yes, um, that was much more a Henry Cowell thing. Um, but Cage used it to very good effect in, in the name of the Holocaust, written, can you believe this? The day after Christmas, 1942, which is very, very early to have known about the Holocaust. And John Cage, being always apolitical, will never, never, ever um, openly say, yes, that's what this piece is about. He would always deflect the issue by saying, oh, the title is a pun on in the name of the Holy Ghost, in the name of the Holocaust, in the name of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and um, people can make of the music what they want. The music speaks for itself. It's very powerful. It's very, very strong. There's no mistaking its content um, because the sound of the plucked, prepared piano strings is the most haunting, desolate sound. And the piece is, ends with these massive elbow clusters and the prepared piano nuts and bolts that are part of the preparation jangling like mad it's it's really quite a, a powerful statement on his part I don't care what he says about the title being you know a pun on in the name the Holy Ghost as he said the music will just have to speak for itself finally John said that and he's right the music does speak for itself wonderful Margaret did John Cage ever play for you something anything on the piano maybe demonstrated or he didn't want to do that? Well, it's really funny because um, I played in the name of the Holocaust uh, for the film that was made about him by American Masters, the film on PBS that was called I Have Nothing to Say and I'm Saying It. That's the name of the John Cage film. And he has me on film with him at the kitchen in New York, and I'm preparing the piano for In the Name of the Holocaust. And he's standing right by me as I prepare the piano. And he talks about the prepared piano. And, and then he says to me afterwards, oh, I'm so glad you're doing this and that I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. That's one of his most popular pieces. Oh, yeah. the second piece. It's written for piano. 
and it's influenced by Eric Satie. Um, it's very modal and minimalistic, written in 1948. It really predicts um, minimalism by a couple of decades. Later. Yeah, it's, it's very economic in its means. And um, it was written for piano, but there have been many, many transcriptions of it for different instruments. So I thought I would add mine to the mix mm -hmm. where I made a version for piano and toy piano. And it's a, a very lovely combination. I think it works very well. So that's what I will play at the Polish and Slavic Center. Wonderful. Margaret, but tell me also regarding the transcription. So because John Cage wrote a piece just to his seminal suite for toy piano from 1948, which is the first ever serious piece of music yes. written for the toy piano. And then in 1960, he made his very abstract, indeterminate um, music for amplified toy pianos, amplified which is piano. really makes the performer a co-creator of the work. But he played a lot and he liked this instrument, he discovered, right? He, so. So toy piano was very special for him. But the transcription, also we can also find on the CD, but you did this transcription, right? For the dream. Yes, yes. So it's your transcription, yes. original, it's your my transcription. Yes, yeah. yes. That's good to mention, you know. So I also, because you know, there are, I also listen to some of your uh, CDs and there are also CDs only with the toy pianos. So you probably have many, many sizes of the instruments. And when you do those transcriptions, do you, for example, for the dream, do you like to choose particular instrument? How does it work when you pick up um, the... Well, given the range of the piece, I don't have any choice but to use my three octave, the largest okay. one that I okay. perform on, yes. Mm -hmm. the, three the suite for toy piano, on the other hand, can be played on a much narrower range toy piano because it only uses nine consecutive white notes from E to F. Only the white notes. You could even play it on one of those toy pianos with painted black keys. Painted black keys. You know, like a peanut Schroeder piano. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's great. And you know also, Margaret, so th this is your program with those two pieces, but I also want to mention one thing because you and I were also recently playing a lot of George Crumb. But there is some connection between John Cage and George Crumb. The, the George title. Crumb has his own personal statement as in Guernica. In Guernica. Inspired by the Picasso painting. That is George Crumb's equivalent answer mm -hmm. to Cage's in the name, the Holocaust. And that piece appears in his very final work, Metamorphosis book. Two, yes, yes, exactly. That's which I will be playing, you know, um, uh, at the Library of Congress um, a week after our concert in New York. And in then New I York, will Brooklyn. play Metamorphosis Book Two again in New York um, in, in December, early December at National Sawdust. No, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. And also, and you are now in Singapore, but you are also traveling soon to Australia. Is, am I right? After I finish my three performances of my theatre piece, Dragon Ladies Don't Weep, mm -hmm. um, which is a sonic memoir, it's a sonic portrait of me. And it's dedicated to the memory of John Cage and my mother. And then I go to Australia to do it at the Oz Asia Festival in Adelaide another three performances and then I'm back to New York and then I come to you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Margaret, for doing this. For everyone who is listening to us, I would like to also recommend to for listening your recordings, but mm, there's a recent very touching movie, mm, Twinkle Damage, right, which also shows <laughs> your, also some elements with John Cage, but also with George Trump. You can find some uh, snapshots with uh, working with yeah. George Crumb. George Crumb on George. Metamorphosis Book One, which George he wrote for me. Yes, yes. Exactly. yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, Margaret, I'm very honored that you will play for us. Thank you very much for sharing those memories. One more time, I would like to mention that in, on the 5th of November, during the Chopin and Friends Festival in New York City, in Brooklyn, the Polish Slavic Center will have a concert dedicated to memory of John Cage and Margaret Lang. 
10 will play for us two pieces by John Cage. I will just talk about this. The name of the Holocaust, which is played inside the piano and uh, the dream, which will also have transcription, original transcription uh, for the toy piano. Combined. And, and together. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So that's also very unusual, you know, and it's beautiful because uh, we have those two different sounds. So Margaret, thank you very much. Uh, for this, I wish you a great, great concert in Australia, also in, in a great time in Singapore. And we're looking forward for your concert. Our guest was Thank Regis you. Margaret Langton. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.